approached by Rainbow, obviously a rock band and wizards and fairies and all this sort of stuff. At this stage, when you were approached by them, you didn't actually know anything about them, did you? You had no idea who they were. No, no, I haven't. I, uh, my manager said to me, there's this band called Rainbow would like to, uh, you know, audition you for, for you know, to be their new singer. And I said, Rainbow, I thought you sound like a folk group. You know, Rainbow, you know, it sounds like a folk group almost. And he said to me, well, my manager said to me, well, they used to be Deep Purple. Now they've changed the name. Uh, Roger Glover is still playing bass and Richard Blackmore is a guitar player. They changed the name to Rainbow. So uh, what happened was he wanted to send me over to uh, Switzerland on the, and um, where they were recording. And uh, he said, you better learn some of their songs. And then anyway, he got in touch with me and said, learn this one. It's called Mistreated. Mm -hmm. And I learned that one song and I went over for the audition. And um, to make a short story even longer, <laughs> they, they said they gave me the job. But what, what happened was I was so scared of, um, you know, you know, fucking up, to put it mildly, uh, on this song. I thought, well, I, I won't sing it on microphone. I will sing it off mic. So the mic was over there somewhere. You know, hey, you know, and the band was playing very loud. And I sang the thing. And when it was over, they, they were all laughing. And I thought, oh, crap, was it really that bad? <laughs> They stared and they said, yeah, let's do it again. And okay, then we did it again. I was still off microphone. And <laughs> then right, then um, Don said, uh, Don Aries said, uh, Graham, how about this time you, you know, sing on mic this time? <laughs> so the third time through, I sang on microphone. They, they were just overjoyed. You said, you're the guy, you know. Wow. And anyway, I went back to England saying to my manager that I didn't think I was right because this wasn't what I was used to singing. You know, I do not R and B, pop, whatever. Not like this, which is sort of semi-classical sounding uh, music. You know, very, very sort of heavy, sort of heavy, mm -hmm. but back then. And uh, so he said, "No, you've got to do this to be good for your career." It was good for his wallet. Uh, <laughs> my career, I'm not sure. No, it didn't. No, it was great for my career. I mean, I got um, I got a lot of recognition because I did join Rainbow and. Uh, I thank Richie Blackmore for taking me in and the guys. I, I you know, it was a, such a great, great journey. And so, I'm so, pleased that happened. So, so how did how did it happen then? Because obviously you, you weren't spotted singing rock songs and things like that. So, so what was it that I'm guessing Richie uh, had, heard, had heard or seen? What what was it that, that picked you out of the crowd then? Oh it, well, it's because of that song only one woman. Okay. Um, they were playing a game. Uh, you know, spot the tune. Yeah. You know, I had the cassette machine there and Cozy was playing Spot the Tune. Right, who's this? Then who's this? Then who's this? And uh, my song and my cousin's song came up and uh, Richie said to uh, Cozy, what's he doing now? Do you know this guy? Oh, I heard he lost his voice. Oh, okay. Then so he's not, not working anymore. Then Roger Glover chimed in and said, well, no, he, he hasn't lost his voice. He's managed by same management as, uh, as uh, who am I thinking of? Oh, Mickey Mooney. And Mickey Moody was recording with Roger Glover, White Snake, the first beginning, the beginnings of White Snake, and we were managed by the same uh, management company. He said, "No, no, he's working with my manager, David Oddy." So anyway, I, I was, uh, you know, they picked me out to come audition. So it was, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect, and I, I just didn't think I was right for the band. But uh, anyway, I went back again, and we started recording, and it was. Uh, I was like, oh, crap, what do I do here? So Roger said to me, look, I'll help you through with some of the melodies, and then I'll write the words. I said, okay, that's good for me. And so Roger wrote the words, and he gave me a, a brief outline of the, of the melodies, and I would sing it my way, interpret it, you know, whichever way I wanted, you know. A bit like the only one woman, really. So mm -hmm. I'd live for it, go, off you go. And it's, 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 all my, it's all my cousin's fault, the C sharp and, and a... A D even comes into all my songs ever since. <laughs> so anyway, but that's kind of how it all began, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. Roger taught me a lot. Roger Glover was a great a great teacher and um, great producer, apart from anything else, and songwriter. So um, we made the album in that way. Um, Roger will give me a rough idea how the melody should probably go with the lyric written. 
And um, I would just add lib and, you know, no, not that one, not that one. Oh, this one, this one. So we'd record it, each one, each song was recorded four times. Okay. And uh, uh, Rich would come in and uh, he would pick out which one he liked best. You know, oh, no, 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 this one. Oh, it's not as good as the other. Anyway, that's how we did every song. So it took a long bloody time yeah. to <laughs> because it was all kind of bad lib and, oh, this one, that one. No, 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 no. You know, but I like that one best. Ah. But it was... Uh, it was a great learning uh, uh, tool for me. It really was. And uh, I thank Rich and I thank Roger so much, well, whole band, really, for uh, putting me in that position of uh, being a student of um, sort of heavy rock, I guess, which I wasn't. But um, now I guess I am. <laughs> and let, let's be honest, there's not many better people to be learning from than the, the names you're talking about there, Richie Blackmore and Roger Glover and Don Airy and, and Cozy Powell, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you went into yeah. a group of, of superstars, really, didn't you? Oh my God! I mean, how could you fail in such a band? I mean, I, I, I said, you know, afterwards when we went on stage, I would say, "How did it feel when you walk in front of you know twenty thousand people above the hell?" I said, "Well, I always felt comfortable with the band, no matter how shitty I felt. Once I walked out on stage and those guys were behind me, how could it fail? If I if I croaked or messed up in a song, it didn't matter. <laughs> you know, these guys were so good. You know, but I never felt." I never felt nervous. I always felt uh, excited about going on stage with them because they were so damn good. And uh, as I said, how could you fail? Cozy, Don Airy, Roger Glover, Richie Blackmore. Come on. You know, Indeed. The best. Indeed. Absolutely. I was lucky enough to join them at that particular time. Absolutely. And you yeah. mentioned the fact that obviously it was a change for you, but it was a change for the band as well and in, in kind of direction. And let's be honest, people, people, us humans, we, we don't deal traditionally well with change. So did you get any negative feedback or anything like that during the early time of, of your, your being in the band? Oh, yeah. At, at first, yes. I remember um, the very first show we did was in a, an arena somewhere. I can't remember what city it was in, but it was in, in the States. And uh, there were some guys down front of the stage they were like heckling me and go, oh, get up. We were Ronnie, Ronnie, you know, calling out for Ronnie, Ronnie Dio. I, I expected it anyway, you know. I mean, Ronnie was a great singer, you know, bless his heart, you know, wherever he may be. And um, they were doing all this, you know, they, I couldn't concentrate. And uh, Richie looked at me and he started playing this D chord in a very ding, 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 ding arpeggio. And I knew what that song was. It was a song called Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> so I went and sat down on the stage in front of these guys and looked them straight in the eye and said, tonight you're mine completely. <laughs> and they started laughing. And from that moment on, I was in. I was part of the gang. You know, so it's a, it shows that I was a human being and I didn't mind make, being made fun of, if you like, while, uh, you know, shouting out, get your bloody hair cut, whatever it may be, you know. And uh, I was the only short-haired guy in the band, for Christ's sake. But anyway, that from that day on, I felt very comfortable about going on stage and not being heckled, you know, yeah. for some reason. It, it was just that one night, the first night, wow. you know. Was, you know, no record for me because the first damn night, I was cozy with so nervous, so I'll never forget that. He kept going to the bathroom. Oh, gee, what's he doing, you know? i go for a piss again. Go for a piss. Oh, really? And he said, Great, Graham, you're going to be all right. I said, Are you? <laughs> yeah, more nervous than I was. But anyway, the, very successfully after that uh, little confrontation with those guys. And they were they were so nice after that, you know. They were laughing and going, All right, bud, you're okay. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, the the record Down to Earth, it was a, a huge hit here in the UK. In fact, it was it was a, a higher charting album than any of the previous Rainbow records that had come before it, which is fantastic. I mean, All Night Long, it's a classic, but we're going to talk about um, Since You've Been Gone. I mean, it, it's world famous. It's It's got a legacy as well to it. And I, I saw recently posted on your social media about the fact that it had been used on the, the trailer for the, the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which means it, it lives on. It's It's finding new audiences now as well, isn't it? Yeah, I, I guess, yeah, a lot of people have, uh, oh, I took my kids to see this, and uh, when we heard your voice, we told them who you were, you know, all that is come, coming out now, and it's so, it's it's a great, fucking great, I mean, I don't know how how much will help my career, but but it's so nice to hear that song on a, you know, on a, a movie, you know, yeah. it's fantastic, and um, I was very surprised when uh, Bethany, my girlfriend, she said, listen to this, listen to this, 
Guardians of the Galaxy uh, promo. I said, what, 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 what? And she played. I said, that's, that's me. She said, yeah, I know. And so the rest is history, I suppose. We'll see what he does. I hope I do gather more, you know, younger viewers, listeners, whatever, from that. But uh, their parents or their grandparents are saying, that's, I know him. He is, he's a... Uh, it's our Graham from Skegness. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I don't know if it'll help, but it's a great honour to be part of that movie because they're so, those movies are so popular. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in terms of the song itself, I mean, take me back to that that time in the recording studio. As you said, you were, you were doing three or four versions of the song. Can you, of, of all the songs on the album, sorry. So in terms of that one, can you remember getting it down and was there a general consensus about which one was going to work because it is such a classic? Oh, with that, you see, with since you've been gone, that was already written. So, uh, you know, uh, we heard it'd been recorded, I think, four times before we did it. Okay. And the, the version I heard was by a band called um, Clout, which was a girl band. And I heard this and nobody liked it. I mean, I remember Cody going, oh, we're not going to do, we're not gonna do that. I mean, oh, shit. You know, it was <laughs> nobody liked it because it was very, very, very poppy. Yeah, I remember the um, the way they did it was since you've been gone. It wasn't whatever I did. It was very, very sort of uh, you know, very light and airy, don airy. And so it um had to be changed a little. And I I love that the way that guitar starts the song off. That's Richie Blackmore 100 percent That sound here. Yeah identifiable you know and uh so we made it a little heavier but not too much you know so instead of going you know whoa 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 you know and um we were encouraged by our management by uh, bruce payne he said that's fucking good that's good that's it this is it this is it we're gonna get radio play now and that's the reason it's done yeah. to get, uh, you know be more radio from which it became uh, you know, here in the States and all over the place, you know, so good move, you know, nobody likes it. But then after that, we all liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I bet. Um, and just something that you, you get asked a million times, I'm, I'm sure you do. And you mentioned it just a, a few minutes ago as well, that the famous haircut thing, um, the very famous video of, of Richie talking about the haircut and, and having you locked in a room and you, sn you snuck out to go and get your hair cut and then he was he was raging with you and that's one of the reasons he fired you and all this sort of stuff. And I know you've rubbished it over the years, but can you tell us a little bit more about that famous story? Yeah, yeah it's uh, <laughs> he's embellished that story a bit. He's <laughs> adding to it every time. I hear. I, I'm surprised that story is still travelling along all, after all these years. <laughs> what actually happened was we were in... I can't remember what, maybe even in Scotland, I think, actually. And um, I was with my ex-wife, and uh, my hair was getting like this, like it is now. I've been off the road for so long. We go back on the road in, in a month. But I didn't have my hair cut when I was off the road, you know. And you could see, got a fucking pony cell back there. Anyway, so I was walking around the city with her. I think it was Edinburgh. And um, my hair was quite as long as this. And I said to her, I said, I'm going to get a haircut while you go and uh, shop, you know. So I went to get a haircut, and that was it. That's all. That's all I did. And um, there was no guard on the door or anything like that. In fact, I saw our road manager. Uh, I say about three months ago, and we were talking to him and laughing about that story. I said, well, "He said I wasn't put on the door to guard you." I said, "I know, I know, but isn't that a great story?" Yeah. So, so I, I just done my haircut, and um, so I walk out on stage that night. You know, Richie hadn't seen me all day. We never saw each other all day. It was always just show time. That's when we all see it, saw each other. And uh, I would sort of come on last. You know, they're doing the intro to a song called Eyes of the World, the intro song. And I come, you know, running on. And he looks at me and he goes, flabbergasting. And he disappeared. He went behind the amps. <laughs> he went behind the set and didn't come out. And he played there all night. And next day <laughs> we had uh richie called a meeting he said um you know i want to see everybody in my room we all went to his room in the holiday and so on and um we walk in and everybody said oh, what is it what's the matter you know he thought it's something really serious and he looks at me and he goes it's graham's hair 
and everybody burst out laughing. You're like, what? <laughs> you call a meeting about that, you know? And uh, cozy to say, oh, fuck. you know, you can imagine what he said. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. And everybody else said, what, what about his hair? You know, well, he had it cut. I thought he was being mean to me, you know. I, I thought he was insulting me by having his hair cut because I was always saying his hair's too short. And he always did. He always said, well, yeah, isn't it short? Sure? You know, and because everybody else in the band had longish hair. It wasn't long, long. It was longish. Uh, and so uh, that was the meeting. Everybody just thought he was a complete fool. And uh, but Richie blessed him. He asked for that story, as I said. Every time I've seen that interview or another interview, it brings that up. And it's uh, it's magical. Because I didn't know what I did that day, but he's telling me what I did. You know, <laughs> there was guard on the door. And I, I went out the window uh, and then what happened? You know, I'm waiting for something, you know, he hit by a car, but he still kept going. <laughs> you know what I mean? He adds a little bit, but um, I think it's good just going out the window is uh, good enough because we're like seven fours up. You know, so, you know, you're out the window. Of course, you're, you know. Tying the bed sheets uh, together. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the fucking parachute, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, Richie, bless him. I know, I know after that, you know, I know he loves me. I love him too, you know. And uh, after that, everything calmed down at the head. Whatever, you know. <laughs> you, know. you know. Have a fucking, you know, your head shaved, you know. It was okay after that. <laughs> Fantastic. Love that story. And you mentioned in there that you love Richie and, and he loves you. I mean, he's he's got a reputation, obviously, as being one of the greatest guitarists of all time, but as well as being someone that can be difficult at times that's probably a nice way of putting it so so what was your memories of, of working with Richie and what, what's your relationship like with him well if that was the most difficult thing I had was a haircut oh well there you go <laughs> musically no damn problem at all you know he was uh, always um Brian what do you think of this you know I it always when he and Roger worked together you know Rich would be playing his guitar I remember one night um he came and he said to me, uh, do you know that Rolling Stones song, um, Out of Time? It's a song called Out of Baby, 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 you're out of time. He said, I've got this idea, you know, this idea is sort of like that, you know, da 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 Because the melody is the same as, uh, since, as uh, that song yeah. all night long. Because you thought you were a clever girl, oh, and, 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 and Chris Farlow did it. A guy called Chris Farlow, and he, that was a hit record in England. I seem to remember. And he, said, he said, "You know, from this." I said, "Okay, well, I'll make up a melody around that," and that's what happened with that. You know, but we always got on pretty good. You know, uh, and that was uh, just one moment where he said, "He said, well, you, you can make something up of this." Roger will write the words. Melody, you know, and. It's pretty much a, a complete rip off the melody ish, sort of. It's not exactly the same, but, <laughs> but um, you know, I don't think uh, the Rolling Stones would mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that was a hit record again. We did very well with that song. But he was uh, always very open to me. And before ev every show, he would say, uh, hey, What time are you going to come down to my dressing room? I said, Well, what time are we on? Oh, we're on at eight. So we'll come down about, you know, 20 to eight. And I go down and I sit with him. I sit, and he said, uh, What can we do tonight to fuck everybody up? There's got to be something we could do to put, yeah. Uh, and I remember one night he said, What we should have after a cozy, a funny drum solo, we should come out with, uh, you know, cards, you know, seven out of 10, you know, all like that. <laughs> You know, just just for a laugh, and that's what we did one night. That was one joke we played on cozy. We go, well, you know, <laughs> we're all walking across the stage with these numbers, which is kind of kind of funny. You had to be there. I think <laughs> it, was, it was a funny moment. But little things like that we would uh, make up, you know. And uh, I can't remember some of the other things, but that's one I particularly remember because we all just went yeah. we're walking across the stage. It was so funny because his drum solo is like epic. Yeah. I mean, just amazing. You know, so every night, uh, uh, nine out of ten, oh, I don't know, you want to take the nine, you, you take nine. You know, but bless his heart, he was, uh, he could take a joke and he could take a joke, just like I can. We all could. You can't be too serious in this. And I know everybody's like, oh, you know, you know snails, you know, the heavy metal thing, but it's not really like that. What we're doing is we're playing a different person when we go on stage. We really are. You know? 
yeah beautiful people absolutely absolutely and and then the, the fact that you had uh, the big album you had the, the two big singles off the album big records everyone, everyone remembers them but despite all that it kind of all fell apart by the time the second album for you kind of came around didn't it and that's that was what kind of left you well made you made the decision to leave the band yeah well we we were rehearsing in uh, copenhagen trying to write the next uh, album and um we had a new drummer because koji had left so we had this new drummer with this huge fucking hairdo and uh talk about hair and uh we, we would go to this rehearsal room and some days there were like two people there another day there'd be three of us there one day there was just me there nobody was interested especially richie and we're supposed to be you know making up new songs for the new album and uh i think the laziness was because we had a song from russ ballard again yeah. uh a song called i surrender and that's the only song we had and uh i said to roger Glover, i said well what we're going to do we haven't got anything he said well we've got i surrender the russ ballard too he said do you want to go in and do the backing harmony i said yeah I'll get, we'll start there at least so i went in and did the, some backing harmonies which weren't used in the end i don't think uh and that was kind of it i didn't do a lead vocal on it at all and uh it was very uh, not very it wasn't productive at all because uh, richie wasn't coming in and showing us what to do you know and uh, some some days he would and uh, anyway it just got to like well what the fuck are we, what are we doing you know we have nothing and time was passing by and you know the, the album was supposed to start recording like yesterday <laughs> and uh, okay well we got we got to i surrender yeah okay well what else have we got so you know be sitting looking at each other and don says don airy says i'm going to go home oh no don't go home right uh, come on no no don we, i need you here because I, you know, me and don were very me me and don and cozy very close three musketeers and when cozy was gone it was like oh, kidding me anyway don says i'm going i don't, I don't like the new the new you know, the drummer and everything it's just cozy's gone it's not the same and nobody's turning up for rehearsal anyway so uh he said i'm gonna go home and i said well uh, if you go home don i'll go home too because i'm not finding this very interesting or exciting or what either nothing's happening so i went home and he didn't <laughs> he, he stayed he said you bloody, you bloody bloody so he stayed and i thought i, I said to him, i thought you were going to leave and he, anyway he didn't and uh i got a phone call from uh our manager the band manager who said well are you coming back and i said no I, I want to do something else and i thought don was going to leave it don't still with the band yeah yes he's still with the band he said well i said well i don't uh i don't know what to do and so well we found another singer and if you come in and sing the songs you'd like and let this other singer sing the songs you don't like whatever that means <laughs> and uh we'll go that way i said no that that doesn't work two singers in rainbow yeah no I can't, I can't see that you know and uh so i left the band i wasn't fired although people like to think i was <laughs> because i had another haircut or something <laughs> oh come out the bathroom wait here like this. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that um yeah so um that that was it for me and uh I found a guy in LA, uh, a guy called Andy Truman, who had a good um, reputation. He managed Jethro Tull, the Bass City Rollers, uh, a, a bunch of different people, you know, all different uh, genre. And uh, my one of my friends introduced me to him and he took over management. And so he said, well, Brian, what you should do is get yourself a band together. And that's how Alcatraz was formed in my garage. Calabasas. And uh, that took a while too. But that's what I wanted to do was form my own band uh, that was similar to Rainbow, have the same kind of lineup, keyboards, guitar, you know, bass, yeah. you know, that kind of lineup. And that's what happened then. Yeah.